Hello everyone. We are Tom and Melissa, and we appreciate that you have come to join us at Come Sit at My Table. It's almost Thanksgiving. It's just a week away. And we are trying to get everything ready for our holiday meal. So today we are going to cook our turkey. Actually, it's going to take us today and tomorrow, and you'll see why in just a few minutes. We are actually going to deconstruct this turkey. And when I say that, I mean that we're going to remove the legs and thighs, we're going to remove the breast, and we're going to remove the wings. And then we will have just the carcass of the turkey left, and we will use it to make turkey stock along with all the goodies that were found inside of our turkey. When you thaw a turkey or you buy a fresh turkey that's already been prepared for you, inside you're going to find the neck, the heart, the liver, the kidneys, all those things that you can eat, but most of us don't. And what we do with that is we put it in a big stock pot with the carcass that's left after we've deconstructed our turkey and we put water on it and boil it and boil it and boil it with some onions, carrots, and celery to make stock. That's a totally different video, one that we're not going to do today. So I'm just going to remove that and we will talk about making turkey stock at a later date. This is a butterball turkey. It is 23 and a half pounds. He's a big boy. And we need to get started deconstructing it, taking it apart so that we can brine it tonight in the refrigerator. Now we're going to do what's called dry brining. We're not going to put it in liquid. We're actually going to salt the entire bird once we get it taken apart. And we're going to leave it on cookie sheets with um, racks, with cooling racks so that it can have air moving all the way around it. And we're going to put quite a bit of kosher salt on it so that that salt flavor can penetrate into the fibers of that turkey meat. It just gives it a fantastic flavor. I will tell you that last Thanksgiving was the first time I had ever fixed a turkey this way. And I will never cook a Thanksgiving turkey any other way. It was fabulous. We loved it. Our kids loved it. I'm just going to tell you the truth. For the first time ever, our kids were crazy about the Thanksgiving turkey. In fact, they took all the leftovers home with them, and we had none. And that was wonderful, because what that said to me was, they loved the turkey. So, let's get started deconstructing this turkey. I'm going to tell you that I am not a professional butcher. Lord knows I barely qualify as an amateur butcher. My father-in-law was a professional butcher for most of his adult life. He worked in grocery stores as a butcher. And so I'm a little intimidated doing this on camera because I know he could do such a better job than I'm doing. But we're going to get started. So... Let's start by taking off the legs. Now you wanna start by pulling that leg as tight as you can. Oh, I see something I should have told you. Melissa, can you zoom in here? Do you see that right there? It doesn't look can you see that? Appetizing. That's a feather. And those all have to come off. I actually left this one on purpose so I could show you. You have to remove those. So if you see something like that on, on the bird, Take it off. There's another one right here on the wing. Can you see that, Melissa? Yes. So you just have to pull those off. They have to come out of there. That would not be appetizing if somebody got that on their Thanksgiving plate. So we're going to pull the leg tight. See how tight that is? And we're going to start by just slicing right down around that leg. Now, there's some loose skin right there that I want to remove. And you'll have to do that as you go. You're going to find things you have to remove. 
Now we want to take this leg and thigh off together. So I've carved it now down to the part where the meat is. So I'm going to stop there because when we finish this, I've got to flip it over. So I'm going to come over to this side and do this leg and then we will flip the bird and finish on the other side. Okay, so we have flipped the bird over and now we're ready to do the back side of the legs. Before we go on, let me just acknowledge something so there's not a million questions. <laughs> As I was starting the underside of the leg, I nicked my finger. I am fine, it is not bleeding. I've cleaned the knife, <laughs> everything's fine. I promise. <laughs> And I bought these new Cuisinart knives, and man, are they sharp. Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to, we have cut up along the oyster, the piece of meat here. You can see that there's kind of like a hill here. There was a valley on either side, and then the piece of oyster meat. So, we cut up what would be like a little valley between those two pieces, and down the back. And now, we're just going to pop that leg out of its socket. Hard it pop. No, it hasn't yet. That was the pan. There, did you hear it? Yep, I did. Okay. So, now, we're just going to cut right along through there where that, you can see where that popped out, right? Yes. Okay. So, we're going to cut right down along there, right down that joint, down along the bone, and take off that thigh. We want to stay as close to that bone as we can because we want all that meat. Okay, so there's our first leg and thigh. Not too bad for somebody who's barely an amateur. <laughs> And it only took one small cut. <laughs> one bad day okay, so, far. <laughs> so we're going to move this over to, there's another feather, over to our rack. And we're going to leave it for just a while while we remove all the other pieces. And then we will be back to salt and finish it. Now, I'm going to do this other leg. And after we get this leg off and on the rack, then we'll come back and work on the breast. All right, the next part we're going to take off is the breast. We're going to start right up here, and if you feel down the center, you will feel that bone, that breast bone coming down through there. So you want to cut just on the side of that breast bone. So we'll go right here, make a cut right against that breast bone, as tight as we can get. Make sure we're right against it. And we're just gonna let the tip of our knife Follow that meat right down that bone. Just right down through there. As close to that breastbone as you can get. And then we'll come all the way down through that skin. Now, we want to follow that bone all the way down. And this is something you're going to have to do slow. Now, there's a bone right here. So you've got to get around that bone to start coming down through there. But you'll hear the tip of your knife right against that bone. And you want to keep the tip of your knife right there so you get as much of that meat as is possible. I'm just admitting that I am not doing a perfect job. So, if you've noticed that too, that's okay. You don't have to tell me I'm not a professional butcher. <laughs> I know that. So, we're almost down to the bottom. Now, that's a bone right there, so we're going to go around it. You see that right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna go around that bone and we're gonna follow it right down. And 
Let that just fall right off there. Continue right against that meat, and that bone, until we get all the way down. I think you can do this with an electric knife. I wouldn't try it. Your dad probably could. Well, my dad would probably. Your dad would have had. <laughs> your dad would have had six of these already deconstructed and probably dry brined and in the refrigerator. Okay. So there's our breast. Now, it's a beautiful big piece of meat. So we want to keep the skin intact. Absolutely. Yes, you want that skin on there. That's going to be, in my opinion, the best part. So we're going to bring it over, put it on our sheet, and that's a huge breast. Put it on our rack on the cookie sheet. Want that breast meat covered the best we can get it covered. Now, you've noticed that we've put the leg and thighs on one sheet, and we're putting our breast on a different sheet. There's a reason for that. The breast and the wings will cook faster than the leg and thighs. So we're having them on two different sheets so that when the wings and breast are finished cooking, we can leave the leg and thighs in the oven for a few more minutes until they reach the proper temperature. Okay, I'm gonna do the other breast and we'll be right back. All right, we're down to getting the wing off and then we'll be finished. So we're gonna pick the wing up and just cut right through there. We want to go right through where that joint is. You can see the bone right there. Go right through that joint and take that wing right off. Now, that's what's left. That's our carcass. I do not like the tip on the wing. So I usually take it off. I don't know. It's not always easy to get off. I just try to go down through it, find that joint, wherever that joint is, and pop it. Hear it pop right there. And then just cut right down through that. Just do not like that tip on the wing. I don't know why. It just always bothers me. Okay. So there's our wing. We're gonna put it on the rack with our breast because they bake at about the same rate. Now, I'm going to clean up here. I've got to clean up the carcass and the knives. And when we're ready to put the salt on, we'll be right back. Can we show what's left of right Of what? Right here. right here, the carcass? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's left. Now, that does not need to go to waste. There's a lot of goodness still in there. You can put that in a big stock pot with the innards that we took out and some onions, carrots, and celery and boil it for hours. And it will boil all that flavor out and make you a delicious turkey stock after it's boiled for, I'm going to say eight to 10 hours, not boiled hard, but a good simmer, then you strain it and save that to make turkey gravy. You can make soups and stews. Use it just like you would chicken broth, but it's turkey broth. So that's what you do with this. Don't throw it away. That's got a lot of really good flavor still in there. All right, we'll be right back. So now that we have our turkey completely deconstructed, we're going to dry brine it. And we're going to do that using kosher salt. Let me just go ahead and address this right up front. We're going to use a lot of kosher salt. So for those of you who are heart patients, you're watching your salt intake, you have high blood pressure, you may not want to put as much on or you might want to consider whether this is for you. But I'm going to tell you, this is where it really makes the flavor and the juiciness of this turkey. All of this salt will not remain on there. 
a lot of it will fall off. A lot of it will come off during the baking. So it's not all going to stay on there, but we are going to use a lot. So just wanted to address that up front. That way Melissa doesn't have to do it on a bunch of comments on the post. It is a lot of salt. So we've got our kosher salt and we're going to flip our turkey over and we are going to salt it. Yes, we are putting a lot of salt on there. That's how you dry brine meat. And we wanna make sure we get it all over that meat. You want it in all the parts of that. You can even lift that up if you've got some places that are kind of covering and get some down in there. Then we're going to flip it over. And I think you heard a lot of that salt just fall off. And we're going to do the same thing on the skin side. I would think this would make it very crispy. It does make it very crispy and very moist. You would think the salt would dry it out and it would be very dry, but that is not the case. It makes it very crispy. I'm even going to go under that skin a little bit and put just a little salt under there. Yeah, you would think it would dry it out though. But you would, but I'm telling you, when we did this last year, I really did this last year as an experiment because I had heard about deconstructing the turkey and um, I'll be daggone if there's not another feather. Okay, I had heard about doing it this way and I just wasn't sure, but I told Melissa and the kids, I'm trying something. This is just an experiment. If it ruins the turkey this year, we'll go out and have Chinese food. <laughs> well, it didn't ruin the turkey. In fact, all of us absolutely loved it. And I was kind of shocked that the kids loved it as much as they did because none of them have ever been fans of a Thanksgiving turkey. They like turkey. They like turkey sandwiches, and but they just never really cared for a baked Thanksgiving turkey. They felt like it was too dry. Oh, I forgot to do the underside. Um, they just, they never really cared for it. So I was really excited last year when they got ready to go home that evening and said, can we take the leftovers? Well, of course. What parents gonna say no? Of course you can take the leftovers. And I was really shocked when they took everything. But that's not a bad thing. In fact, I loved it. I loved that they were so happy with it. And you knew that they had enjoyed your meal. That yeah, means a lot too. Absolutely. It means everything. When you've worked that hard on a meal, you have a big meal on the table means a lot to know that the people who ate around that table loved it and enjoyed it. Okay, I'm going to do the legs and the thighs. Then we're gonna put this in the refrigerator uncovered. Do not cover it. It has to stay uncovered so it dries out. We will leave it in the refrigerator all night until we're ready to cook it, bake it tomorrow. And we will take it out of the refrigerator, let it come almost to room temperature. We'll let it sit out for a while and then we will bake it. But we'll be back and show you that when we get ready. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Our turkey has been dry brining in the refrigerator overnight and now we're ready to finish the process. Here's what we're going to do. We will start by putting our turkey pieces in a hot skillet with oil on the skin side. Put the skin side down. We're gonna brown it for about five minutes, five to 10 minutes, just until the skin is nice and browned. Then we will remove it to a parchment paper lined cookie sheet where we will put it in the oven to finish baking and cooking. Now. We will talk about how long to cook it when we get to that point. We need to get these in the skillet because the skillets are preheated. I do not have a skillet that's large enough to put the whole turkey in together. In fact, I don't think this whole turkey will even go in two skillets. 
So I'm going to probably have to do it in batches and that's fine. That's not gonna hurt a thing. So we're gonna take these turkey breast and just move them right into this hot skillet. Ooh, I can hear it sizzling already. I hope I can fit both these breasts into one skillet, but I'm not sure. They are huge. But we're sure gonna try. Skin side down only. When they get browned on that side, we will take them out and move them to a cookie sheet. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with our legs and thighs in this skillet. I don't know if I can get both of these in there or not. I don't believe I can. So, try to get a wing in there. Or maybe both of them. Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, you have to get another batch anyway, so. Yeah, I am going to have to do another batch. So, okay, well, both of those are in. Now, you don't want to stay here for the next five to ten minutes and watch, watch these brown. So, we're going to get them browned on the skin side. We will remove them from the skillet once they're browned, put them on the cookie sheet. I'll do the other leg and thigh, and then we'll come back and show you what they look like before we go in the oven. We'll be back. It took about eight minutes for us to brown the pieces of turkey. Now, we're going to put them in the oven skin side down, but I did want to leave a piece of each kind up so you could just see what the skin looks like. You can see we didn't over brown it, but it is nice and browned. So I am gonna flip these just because we wanna make sure the skin side is down. Now you can see these are <laughs> by far finished cooking. They are not cooked at all. All we did was brown them. So they have to be cooked. And the way we're going to do that is to put them in the oven. Now we have preheated our oven to 450 degrees. Yes, 450 degrees, that's a, that's a pretty hot oven. The breast and the wings should take between 25 and 35 minutes. The leg and thighs, legs and thighs are gonna take longer. They're going to take about 55 to 60 minutes. How do you know when they're done? Well, you're going to use a meat thermometer. Now this is the one I have had for most of my adult life and you just insert it into the thickest part of the meat and watch the dial. But one of our kids gave me this really cool technological thermometer for Christmas last year. And it's an instant read digital thermometer. You just insert that part and then it reads it and tells you in digital what the temperature is. So that's what I'll be using. So we want the breast and wings at 160, and we want the leg and thighs, I believe, at 190. Is that right, Melissa? Uh, I'm not I think that's right. This. 160 for the breast and wings, and 190 for the leg and thighs. Okay, so we're gonna get those in our ovens. I'm gonna put one pan in one oven, one in the other. We have two separate ovens. If you don't do that, that's okay. You can put them all in together if you can fit both sheets, you know, one above the other, but you'll have to take one out before the other because the leg and thighs take longer. Okay, we're going in the oven. When they're finished cooking, we'll be back and let you see what they look like. In we go. Our turkey breast and wings baked for 35 minutes. And according to the digital thermometer that I used, they were right at 160 degrees internal temperature. The legs and thighs baked for 55 minutes and they were at 190. When they were up to temperature, we took them out and we tinted them with foil to let them rest so they would reabsorb the juice and stay juicy when we cut them. So let's and cover them. Ooh, look at the steam. They look delicious. Now, <clears throat> I am using the same tongs 
to move these that I used to put them into the skillet and whatever. But they have been scrubbed with hot soapy water. If you're using the same tongs, make sure you have washed them well. All right, so remember we did bake them skin side down. So we do want to turn it back over. And we will slice it. They are hot. I don't know about you, but the end piece is never my favorite. Actually, you know, I should have done this upside down probably. It probably would have cut better laying flat. I do like to cut it just a little bit on an angle. I think it makes a prettier presentation. It's Look nice how juicy. Nice. Look at that. I'm, I hate to do this to squeeze the juice out, but I want you to see this. See yeah, Look at right. that. Yeah. I'm telling you folks, if you fix your turkey like this, you will never cook a whole turkey again. It is so moist, so tender, so delicious. Yum. Okay, you know, wow, that is hot, hot. Probably should have let that cool. Now, I've got to rinse this off my hands, and then I'm tasting it. And I bet I know someone else who's going to taste it, too. Mm, turkey's one of my favorites. You know it, baby. Is it your favorite meat? It is way up there. I mean, I, I probably order chicken or get chicken more often just because, again, I don't know. I guess it's just... Well, it's and it's more usually, places have chicken than turkey. I was going to say chicken's <laughs> more available on a menu, right? Than turkey is in most places. But I really like turkey. This is oh, no, fabulous. If turkey is available on the menu, Melissa's almost always going to order that. Oh my goodness, this is so moist. You get the first bite. Hope it's not too hot. Mm, it's a big bite. Sorry. I forget. Mm. That is crazy tender. Ridiculously juicy. And full of flavor. That is really good. I know I say that all the time, don't I? But it's true. It it's really true. is good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I can't imagine us ever cooking a whole turkey again. By the way, you can see the legs. We flipped these over, didn't we? I did flip these over when they came out. Just because I thought they would look better when I uncovered them. They look really good. Don't those look delicious? Yep. Okay. Thank you so much for watching our video. We really do appreciate it. Remember that you can go right below this video. You'll see the title of it. It'll probably say Thanksgiving Day Turkey or something, whatever the title of the video is that Melissa chooses. If you'll click on that title, that box will open. It's a description box. She always puts the written recipe right there for you. So you don't have to do anything while we're doing the video. You can just look below and the whole recipe is right there. Not really a recipe, more of a procedure for this one. That's true. For this one, it's not really a recipe. It's step by step. the way we do it. We really would appreciate it if you would click the thumbs up button. That just says you liked our video. If you've not already, click that subscribe button and the little notification bell in the word all. That just helps you join our channel, helps us grow our channel. We sure would appreciate that. Remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table from our table to your table. Happy Thanksgiving.